The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for What You See with your host, Larry Pezzavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pezzavento. Okay, good afternoon, folks. Uh, at the break, going to have my uh, best friend, Byron Tucker, who's a member of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange when I was a member back then in 82, 83, 84. Uh, we've been best of friends um, ever since. We've traveled the world together, and we've had a lot of fun. But um, he will be talking to us. He was instrumental. He ran Goldman Sachs's uh, floor operations at the Merck. He worked for Leo Malamed, so he's going to have some good stories to tell. And if you have any questions about how this, the, the exchanges operate and stuff like that, he certainly is the one that you'd you'd want to ask because he's on the inside to know what's going on more or less. I uh, had one question was about, uh, we're going to talk about Apple this morning because it's getting the news quite a bit. Evidently, they've come out with a new phone that allows you to do certain things like order food and cabs and other stuff that you can talk with and, and does a lot of things, plays games. I don't know what they call it, but this phone is selling relatively well, and that makes the stock go up. They have $175 billion in cash. Uh, they're worth over $711 billion as of the market this morning. Uh, that surpasses Exxon by quite a bit. And remember, Exxon has been hit by low oil prices. So what what Apple is doing is really, uh, really something. So uh, what I want to talk to you about here today is if we look at Apple stock here over the past um, three or four years, and if you remember uh, back in 2000 and. Um, uh, 12, uh, we were talking about the butterfly pattern that was forming uh, at $700 a share. There were 33 analysts on Wall Street. All of them were bullish. Uh, in fact, they were wildly bullish with price objectives from $800 a share to $1,200 a share. And they'd never had one where they had 33 analysts all, uh, usually there might be a neutral one in there, but all 33 were bullish. And, of course, the market dropped in half. It went from 703 down to 385. It did it in a perfect A, B, C, D format where the A, B leg was perfectly symmetrical to the C, D leg. Uh, when you got it down to 385, it took four or five months to people to even get interested in the stock anymore. What we have going on now is that we have a completion of that A, B leg coming in at the uh, 1.27 at 124.88, and we're trading at 124.31. Now, this completes a major, major pattern. Uh, as you can see on the weekly, it's also a three-drive pattern. So, you know, I think the news is probably out on Apple. They must have had a good product come out, and it must be selling relatively well for them to having that kind of money. Folks, you got to buy them when they're crying and sell them when they're yelling, and this ain't the time to be buying Apple, in my opinion. Uh, it might get higher, and it probably will, but this is not the time to be buying Apple uh, in my opinion, with 175 billion in cash, they can just about buy any competitor uh, out if uh, if the SEC uh, or what the other organizations that they have uh, will allow them to do that. But this is not the time. You have to, you know, try to buy something when it has a like a pullback. I mean, we had a weekly pullback at 105 dollars a share, you know, just in early January. That was a perfect 61 percent retracement, and you know the markets rallied, you know, over 10 percent in just a matter uh, of that short period of time. So. Keep in mind that you try to uh, buy them when the you know the prices are a little bit low, not when they're you know going crazy to the upside and you're seeing uh, things that are just uh, you know really va basically you know unbelievable. Now, one of the questions that we've had from someone in the den is uh, about the tulip bulb mania that occurred. Oh, way back, I think it was in 1700, 16 or 1700. I think it was 1600s. Now, that might have been the South Sea Island bubble. I'm not sure of the dates, but I've studied these uh, bubbles before, I've, all of all the major ones, uh, the Florida land boom, the South Sea Island bubble, and uh, also the tulip bulb mania. But you can't compare the tulip bulb mania with the 
uh, what, what's going on with Apple because Apple is very, very orderly. Tulip bulbs, bulbs became very, very, I don't know how it all started, but it became very, very apparent that everybody in the world wanted to own tulip bulbs. They became like the most uh, amazing things in the world. I don't remember the exact part of it. Um, it's in the book by uh, Charles Mackey, The Popular Delusions and the Madness of Crowds, if you want to go in and look at it. But uh, basically what it did is it, it took tulip bulbs up to the price of $25,000 for a single tulip bulb. That turns into a flower. Okay, after it was over, that same bulb was selling for 25 cents. So um, that's uh, the kind of thing that you have during a mania. We don't have that type of move in Apple. You know, it's had a tremendous move. It's moved 127% off the bottom uh, that we had down when it was trading at 385. But that's nothing like what happened with the uh, with that. I mean, that was crazy. I mean, even even gold when it gold took off and went from um, you know from well we started trading about one hundred and ten dollars an ounce back in seventy two when. Um, uh, Nixon took us off the gold standard. You know, it went eight times up to 865 into 1980, and then dropped all the way down to 230. That was more of a mania than we have with Apple. Apple's not that, uh, not in that type of a. You know, it trades very beautifully, symmetrically with patterns, but that's not a mania. A mania is when everybody wants it. Well, maybe everybody does want it. I don't know. I don't own an Apple. Uh, I use a $25 Walmart special that just absolutely works perfectly. So uh, tomorrow we're going to, uh, on the Commodity Show, we're going to talk about uh, the gold and silver because we're getting really close here, folks. Uh, this is ac absolutely an ideal situation if you've been waiting to uh, get into the gold market on the long side. Frankly, we've been playing it from the short side for quite some time now, and uh, we want to be able to uh, see what it's going to look like here uh, come around uh, Friday or we're, we're closed Monday, but you have to be looking to buy gold sometime probably uh, early next week would be my guess. I certainly hope that it doesn't uh, bottom before then. That would be the ideal place. We've got another, I believe, another 15 or $20 to go to the downside uh, in the gold market and another oh, 60, 70 cents in silver. But we're going to look at those tomorrow uh, in the um, – on the commodity show because we got some other things to look at. The same thing is true uh, with the uh, the oil market. We've had a pretty good break here uh, in crude oil. We've gone below the uh, the 786 retracement by, by just a little bit, and then we've come back above it uh, by just a, by just a little bit. Uh, I think that we're having a major bottom here in this oil market. It's just a matter of when it's getting ready, you know, to hit the same thing. So. We did hit a 61% retracement in the gold today, but I, like I mentioned before uh, on the show last week, uh, the time and price squares out uh, at the end of this week. So you've got to give it a little bit more time, but it did hit it uh, pretty much spot on. Uh, another question that someone brought about the oil market because everybody's you know talking about it, but we've had a we had a really good correction here. We've come down from 54 down to 48. We dropped six dollars a barrel, a 15% drop, but Folks, let me give you a, a clue here. Heating oil has only backed off to a 38% retracement. I mean, oil went down below the 78.6 retracement of the of that last uh, $11 rally, but uh, heating oil has not backed off at all. That's a very positive sign. And I don't know if you know this or not, but gasoline prices on the futures exchange have risen over 35 cents a gallon. So we're starting to see price increases here uh, in Tucson already. The gas has already jumped up about 8 or $0.10 cents a gallon. It's still very, very cheap, but uh, we're in the ballpark where you know you can almost afford to drive your car to the market anymore. So that's usually pretty good. Um, one of the questions someone asked about natural gas, I don't think natural gas is ready yet. Uh, it's trading below the 786 retracement. It's bounced a little today, but I think we've got a little bit more um, uh, more time to work with natural gas before you get anything. It's still under three dollars, and I think you've got to uh, you've got to give it a little bit more time to form a, a little bit better pattern. As far as the stock market is concerned, I feel very strongly that that ABCD pattern that I talked about uh, on Monday's show is still very, very valid. I don't believe that uh, that it's going to be 
uh, taken out by any uh, stretch of the imagination. Let me put this up here to show the folks what it looks like here with the NYSE because we haven't really done anything different. It's still within about a half a percent of where we were. That's a perfect ABCD pattern. Uh, the AB leg took seven days to form. This is the eighth day that we're having now from the bottom. So that's another reason to think that, you know, this is not the time to do it. A lot of this is being, believe it or not, is being caused by the bullishness in Apple. You can see it uh, on the, uh, the, 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 if you watch CNBC, which I do in the morning just to see that the end of the world has not happened. And you also watch Bloomberg and it gives you, you know, everybody's just talking about Apple and Carl Icahn, you know, trying to get it to $1 trillion. And he probably will, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But right now that ABCD is still perfect in that New York Stock Exchange Index. There's another ABCD pattern in the NASDAQ that is up about another 20 points from where we are right now. So we've got a lot of patterns here that's coming into uh, uh, this area. Now, there's something that we really should pay attention to, folks, is that the other day, the uh, CEO of Gallup, uh, Jim Litton, uh, wrote a, a really strong article about why the uh, employment numbers were a total lie. And he used the word lie, L-I-E. Uh, evidently, nobody liked that because he was on CNBC apologizing for the report yesterday, uh, the fact that all of his work was uh, in air. Uh, I think someone put a gun to his head and made him an offer he couldn't refuse. But uh, anyway, that's how politics works, and that's how reports work. But his whole premise of that was that the uh, employment report is bogus because – when a person is unemployed for more than a year, they are dropped out of the uh, thing, uh, the, uh, what is it called? They dropped out of the employment numbers. And if a person is unemployed for more than two years, they're basically unemployable in the area where they were as far as their expertise, whether it was, uh, I, you know, whatever it was accounting, whatever it happens to be. But anyway, that's what, uh, that's what happened. So we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, just keep that in mind that these reports, you know, they're changed to, to make it look good for the politicians. And that's uh, something we have to live with on, along, uh, all along the way. So not a problem uh, with that. So if we have any questions today with uh, Mr. Tucker at, uh, the, at the break, it's going to be 877 Nine two seven six six four eight, and we'll be happy to answer your questions. We're basically what we're going to do at the half hours. We're just going to reminisce and talk about some of the stories that we have. Some of them we can't talk about because they're a little bit off color, but some of them are absolutely uh, very very funny. And uh, the exp and the uh, trading on the floor was just an experience that uh, I actually didn't enjoy it very much because it was very very dangerous with. Uh, people bumping around and also with the out trades you would put a a trade on and uh, if you did a five lot or a 10 lot remember a five lot in the s p at that time which was 500 dollars a point which is equivalent to a 25 lot now uh is basically uh no it's a 50 lot yeah five because it's 10 times every 50 lot that would have been pretty tough. So those were the things that were tough. We're going to take a little break here to pay a few bills. Uh, we got the Dow still down a little bit. Apple is up. So we'll have to wait and see. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over $70. 25% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30 day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, a few more minutes. We're going to have Byron Tucker on as our guest. Uh, Byron and I managed money for Elrod Hubbard, um, the guy who's uh, Dianetics, or you know where you get these guys like Tom Cruise and Kevin Costner and uh, John Travolta, all involved with that. Well, uh, Elrod Hubbard died in uh, 1986 or 87. I believe uh, he died in San Luis Obispo, California, right where I was living. And uh, there was all kinds of conspiracy theories about him passing away. And uh, we were living at the beach. Uh, and uh, the pathologist who did the autopsy on him used to come to our house all the time to have dinner. And uh, he told us about the autopsy. And he said that he died of a massive myocardial infarction and there was nothing sinister about it. He was just a guy who had a heart attack and died. We got a caller from California. Brent, are you there? I am, Larry. How are you today? I'm above ground, staying away from open <laughs> graves. How are you? That's a positive. You got it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I was calling about, if you wouldn't mind, uh, U.S. Steel X is a symbol. Big Steel. I almost went to work for them in 1961 when I got out of college, but I got a better offer at a pharmaceutical company. But they paid the most at that time. I think it was $1,200 a month, which was a big deal back in those days. Hold on a second. This stock has, has certainly taken in the uh, 
taking it in the shorts here recently, but it's it's got a positive bottom here uh, for at least a little bit, I think, uh, Brent. It should hold the, um, you know, the $20 uh, level, but uh, right now it looks like it's got a target of about 30 on it based on the ABCD formation that I see. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. It looked like I was starting to put one together. I'm in at about 21, so... That was my, you, my target was about 28 if I could get that. Yeah, that you don't want it to get below uh, 22, that would be my guess. But the uh, the 382 retracement on the whole thing comes in. I'll uh, put this into Tiger TV so everybody can see it. That comes in at uh, 29, 40, so 28. Uh, it would really be a good place, uh, you know, to take a look at. It's certainly been a more bearish stock than the market, so it could rally even if stocks, you know, do happen to uh, – not read the papers and sell off. I didn't want to make things political, but those jobs numbers are completely bogus. I mean, they're just all... <laughs> they are. They just, they're going to look at the labor participation rate, which is the, probably the lowest in history. It's like, just the whole thing's a joke, whatever. That's what it is. Well, the guy, the guy at uh, Gallup sure came in with a uh, retraction of his uh, his whole thing. He just really, uh, it's in fact, there's a lot of stuff on the internet about it. But uh, you know, somebody, you know, they made him an offer he couldn't refuse. That's basically it. Oh yeah, you basically can't say anything negative about what's going on in this country right now without having some kind of retribution. So, uh, I agree. But it's what it is. Well, I really appreciate your help as, as always, Larry. Have a great day, and I'm looking forward to your uh, your guest you have coming up here. Yeah, that'll be fun. It's uh, we'll be looking forward to talking to him. Thanks for calling in, Brent. I really appreciate it. You got it. Take care. You bet. Okay, folks. I've also posted into uh, Tiger TV the uh, IWM. and it also shows that same pattern that we're looking at with the. Uh, with the NASDAQ, not the NASDAQ, well, the NASDAQ hasn't quite reached this pattern yet. It will with Apple going up every every few seconds. But uh, this ABCD that we have in IWM is also, uh, you know, perfect, and we are uh, completed it uh, just uh, the other day, and it has not gone any higher as of yet. It still could, but we'll have to, you know, give it a little bit of time to see if it's going to do it. But right now, those patterns are complete. Uh, if we, You know, the thing that we mentioned in, the, in our first part of our show on Monday, and I want to repeat that because this is important. We had, you know, the new highs to new lows uh, that were occurring, and you have to respect that when you have new highs to new lows, uh, you know, going up. That tells you that there is a lot of momentum. We haven't had that for quite some time, so there could be a move of people selling bonds and, you know, moving into stocks like Basil was talking about, which we certainly could do. Uh, the, you know, we thought that the trade of the week was uh, to be short bonds last week, and they've gone from, you know, 151 down to the 146 level. That's, you know, five full points. And that's telling us that some major top has occurred. And whether that's going to be related to higher interest rates or not, I don't know. But if there's one thing that you talk about or listen to on, on CNBC, you'll, it's almost unanimous that interest Interest rates cannot go up, but that's the that's the the bottom line. That reminds me of 1982 when interest rates could not go down, and they did. They went from uh, I think we had 13 percent in T bills, and they are now down to under quarter percent. So we're going to take a little break here. We'll have Byron Tucker on at the break, and uh, we got the Dow down just a little and gold down quite a bit. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. 
or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, uh, we're back here at TFNN, and I think we have our special guest on today, Mr. Byron Tucker. Are you there? Mr. Byron Tucker, are you there? Well, hopefully he'll come on. I'm here. <laughs> ah, there you go. Now we can have a, a uh, conversation. <laughs> I've told <laughs> okay. the folks, I've told the folks, uh, you know, that our we've had a 35-year friendship and stuff. But uh, why don't you tell them, uh, Byron, how you got started in this business with Goldman Sachs and your your role on the floor at Goldman Sachs and also with um, uh, Leo Malamud. Could you start out there? Sure, sure. No, I started trading commodities when I was in business school at the University of Chicago. I took some of my <clears throat> student loan money and started going down to the exchange and met a floor trader and uh, who happened to be a fraternity brother of John Corzine. And when I worked at Goldman, I sat to, next to Corzine and got to know him. Um, but um, I, uh, after B school, I went to Wall Street and ended up at Goldman in the just starting futures area and was sent after a training period in New York with Corzine and, and the arbitrageurs to Chicago to organize the mercantile exchange floor operation. And I did that for Goldman for a while and then I wanted to trade on my own and joined Leo's firm. Leo and Milton Friedman created the first 
financial futures contract, which was the currencies after the uh, Nixon dissolved the gold peg and the dollar started flowing freely. And then the rest is history. Leo was an amazing leader and visionary and really created, uh, created the futures industries we know it today. Well, that's uh, it's amicus. But when I first met you, Byron, uh, you were uh, running a, the Goldman Sachs operation, and I saw you wearing uh, your uh, three-piece suit with your galoshes, and I, uh, I was laughing. And you sent Marianne uh, Gordon up to uh, tell me uh, why I'm why are you laughing at my boss? <laughs> and <laughs> well, from it was that tough time, weather in Chicago, as you know. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I. I just thought it was rather funny. And a couple of weeks later, you were back in California riding the motorcycle through Mulholland Drive, as we did many times before. Byron, what, uh, what, one of, we've talked a little bit about what we're going to talk about today, but why don't you tell the folks about some of the rules that they have at the exchange about eating on the floor, if you oh, get my well, that was a good story. <laughs> so I've been a member of the Merck, <clears throat> the Board of Trade, and also the COMAX. And when I was at the Board of Trade in the... Uh, the bonds area and also the grains. Um, there was a guy in the bond pit that met an, bet another guy a hundred bucks that he wouldn't eat this cockroach that had been running around the pit. And so this is the eighties and a hundred dollars had a little more meaning. So the guy chases this cockroach around the pit, grabs it and eats it. <clears throat> and it was so funny that the word got out and the exchange officials came up to him later in the day and find him $100 for eating on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> That's typical of the stuff that went around. You, you know, you've, been, you've seen so many things uh, through the years. Just, just off the top of your head, you know, I've never asked you this before, but, well, I'm sure I have, but, you know, that's in our own conversations. But what are, what are some of the other things that you remember most vividly uh, that you can tell the folks? I know some of the things you can't. Hey, you know what would be a good one? Tell them the time you grabbed me uh, out of the T-bill pit and said, you got to get out of here, and you took me up into the uh, gallery. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. This was a period when the Fed had real impact on the market by raising or lowering of the funds rate, even by a quarter of a point. <clears throat> and the, the Fed had done it, and I saw this wave of orders coming from the phones into the pit, and I knew something was going to hit. So we went up, and we watched as the pit started bidding and offering on this. It was crazy, the number, the number of orders. And they started swaying. And I'd seen this swaying before, and I knew the result. And this, they swayed so much and got so excited that the whole pit, this is T-Bills when it was hot, literally collapsed on the floor. Uh, one guy landed on one of the runner's heads and still lying down was bidding and offering while the runner was under him and they were calling the paramedics. <laughs> and it, it was a time when, when the pit really was a club of the members before the member expansion, but when there was still tremendous competition for the order flow. What do you feel about the uh, pits going to the way of the dinosaurs now? What What's your overall feeling uh, about electronic trading and where we stand there? I was on the floor and during the 87 crash. Uh, at that point, I was trading outside the pit because I had a very active uh, international brokerage business. And... <clears throat> um, and I saw 100 and 200 S&P point bid offer spreads. At one point, it was 500 when things were nuts. But there was always a bid, and there was always an offer, and always in decent size. And my concern about the electronic marketplace is uh, much like what we saw in the flash crash in, in 2011 in May. Um, there were no bids, and there was no one there willing to step in. And the market became simply a one-way street, partially, I think, because of the uh, high-frequency traders, but also I read a, a, an examination of that later. And one of the major liquidity providers <clears throat> simply withdrew their liquidity that day, which happened to be the day they were doing a vote in Congress on whether or not to audit the Fed. I don't know if there's any connection. Hmm. So what do you in '87? I remember when I had to go in the pit to clean out orders. I would turn my badge over on my coat so nobody could see my symbol because I didn't want to get an out trade. It was so crazy. 
you know, you get caught with an out trade that's uh, twenty thousand dollars on a ten lot that uh, changes your style of living for sure. No question. But I, I'm, I, I think electronic trading for people like you and me, Larry, we, in our time frames and what we do is excellent in terms of execution. I remember the backups on getting paper in and out of the market in the gold pit, especially. In oh, you used to wait a half an hour to get a fill. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, but the problem I think is in a moment of crisis. I'm not sure that anybody will be able to do anything. Well, that's true. Do you ever have uh, much contact with Leo anymore? We're talking about um, Leo Malamba, folks. I was invited to a monetary policy forum, the first annual one presented by the University of Chicago with uh, four governors from the Federal Reserve Board and a number of other um, um, professors to discuss U.S. monetary policy, and they honored Leo as one of the founders of the whole financial futures area, and he was there, and I saw him, and we chit-chatted a little bit about the old days, and he's, uh, he still looks great, uh, always has a suntan, uh, but he's essentially retired. Uh, the Merck now has become a major force. I, I think he still sits on the board, but, you know, it's a different league at this point. Was there, there was, was any truth to the rumors that when he was paid for discovering all these financial futures that he basically brought to the Merck, including the S&P and the T-bills and Jenny Mays and gold and all the currencies, that he was getting like one-tenth of a penny for every uh, contract that was traded? Do you know anything about that? Never heard that. And, you know, I spent some years in, in his office uh, and, and helped him develop a a brokerage business at one point before I went off completely on my own. And I, I mean, who knows what's possible, but it was not anything that was ever discussed. And mm -hmm. Leo generated a certain amount of controversy, as any strong leader does, but everybody at the Merck appreciated the value that he imparted because Mercantile Exchange seats always traded at a premium to the Board of Trade because there was a greater unanimity of management focus and a greater creativity. And that was Leo, basically. And what did you pay for you? I hate to hate to rub a little salt into your room here, but what did you pay for your IMM seat the first time you were there? Thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand. And where are they trading now? Well, after they demutualized, uh, the stock went to seven hundred dollars a share. And uh, I think a Merck C, I mean, an IMM C at that point, I mean, not the IMM, the, um, the, the S&P C would have been worth about $4.5 million. Plus, wow. you still had your C rights, which you could lease for several hundred or a few thousand dollars a month. Wow. But Byron, do you remember? happened in New York as well, you know, in terms of um, the, the COMEX. Do you remember in April of 82, uh, they had to drag us into the S&P pit to get our pictures taken because there was nobody there? Right. They said, yeah. you know, they were begging, 15 minutes, please. Please come in the S&P pit and, and make a do a liquidity <laughs> of work for 15 minutes. It was... <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember because I remember it was trading at 103, and the futures were trading at a, at a 101. It was a two two cent discount or two uh, two handle discount, just to, uh, to go into the pit. And of course, later on, you know, as the market started higher, all that's changed. But uh, it certainly had the volume. Now it's unbelievable the type of volume that you see. Well, when I was there, I was doing spreads, among other things, and three of us, a broker, me, and another guy got in the back of the pit, and we just, we decided which way the spreads would be quoted, whether you quoted what you did to the front months, like gold, or what you did to the back months, back months like T-bills. And, uh, and that stuck in forever, I mean, until the pits go away. Um, we also, uh, in, in, 80, in 82, um, I had a customer who was a specialist firm uh, at the New York Stock Exchange, and he realized that futures should always trade at a premium to, to cash, not a discount. He made gazillions of putting that spread on. Wow. And I, I mentioned to uh, you had one very, very <laughs> famous customer, L. Ron Hubbard of Dianetics. Do you Hubbard. go back in those days, huh, <laughs> in Nevada? <laughs> he was, uh, yes, uh, he... Uh, his account came to me mortally wounded, and we put some uh, anesthetic on it, but it, it, it was unsalvageable, basically.
Yeah, someone, someone, had, really, just someone had really hurt him badly. I, I was telling folks a little bit earlier uh, on the show about when he passed away in San Luis Obispo that the uh, pathologist that uh, – did the autopsy was one of the guys who used to come over and fish for salmon and uh, you know have barbecues at the house so there was no conspiracy there he was a man that just died of a massive heart attack that that's basically what happened well he was an older guy at that point anyway I think he was 82 or 83 I think when he passed away I'm not sure exactly but that was in 86 or 87 as I recall but uh, somewhere in there and he he had um, what, what I, aside from creating this protest more or less religion he managed to fend off the IRS, which I thought was an unbelievable achievement, to be honest with you, because he, he got exemption as a church and still functions that way. Mm -hmm. Byron, let's, get, let's talk about the markets a little bit. These folks here are all active traders and investors. Do you have any words of wisdom about uh, you know, uh, buying and selling? Now, don't tell them about buy low, sell high, because that's what I, uh, that's <laughs> what I use. That. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, if you look at the world from 30,000 feet, the LIBOR market, the foreign exchange market, the stock market, the gold market are all controlled and manipulated. And so there aren't really very many fair markets. Um, futures markets are designed <clears throat> to give an, a minor advantage to uh, hedgers. And that's the way the bond contract was created and the way the grain contracts, contracts were created because they want that depth of liquidity in a, in a market so that, that you have a viable trading vehicle. So the manipulation creates uh, real challenges. You can't trade really short term, in my opinion, at least I can't, because the high frequency boys, the flash boys, really dominate the market. It's estimated they take about $60 million a day out of the stock market by what their computer programs can do jointly, collectively. Uh, and, you, and I think the longer-term trade is just too risky at this point because uh, so much is driven by, by government policy and, and the perception of the om, omnipotence of the Fed and one change in Fed statements or one thing that Draghi says and, and the markets can move. So uh, to be able to trade and try to do something, I think you have to find um, medium-term intraday trading area if you're a short-term trader, and if you are a, a longer-term trader, I wouldn't go much over a, a three-day window because otherwise I think you, you're running up against a lot of risk in, in a manipulated market. I right, we've okay got a call. say that on the air. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll just be banned forever, but that's okay. <laughs> now, listen, we got a caller from uh, Philadelphia. He's one of our favorite folks. Uh, John, are you there? Larry, Mr. Tucker, uh, good morning to you both. Yes, I am. Fire away. Ask him whatever you like, John. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Tucker, thank you so much for speaking to Larry. I uh, just love listening to the two of you chat about uh, some historical references. So I wanted to uh, ask you a question. It's a market-making question, basically. Uh, we have all observed, uh, and I've been often wondering about this, in recent years, the concentration of market share uh, has increased dramatically amongst uh, the primary dealers and brokers, your former employer, for example, and amongst the asset managers. Think Fidelity, uh, BlackRock, Vanguard, Capital Research out in L.A. And every six months, we're reading more and more stories in which – these large players are, in fact, setting up systems by which they'll be doing more of their transaction volume off exchange via dark pools or other venues. My hey, John, John, hold on one second, buddy. We've got to take a break here to pay some bills, but we both gentlemen stay on so we can finish this when we come back? Yeah. Okay, stay with us, please. We'll be right back after these words of wisdom.
Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and the power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Up next, the Diagnostics Trading Hour with Daryl Martin here on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have Mr. Z from Philadelphia asking a question to our good friend Byron Tucker. Z, would you mind repeating your question for Byron again so the folks that it, uh, will remember it? Yes, Mr. Tucker, uh, thanks. Um, with this concentration of market share power and growing dark pools and off-exchange trading, would be just my question, for example, if I'm buying a share of Johnson & Johnson at 100 bucks a share today, is given your understanding of market mechanics and market making, are the prices in those dark pools the same as what we see on exchanges? And will that change, uh, you know, in the coming months and years? That's the question. Well, that's right to the point of, mar of price discovery, which is the point of markets in the first place. One of the 
see in these markets I mentioned earlier that price discovery is one of the victims. I don't know the answer to that because it's, it's impossible for me at this point to see inside of a dark pool. I know that the fidelity in these companies are going there because they're tired of being picked off by the high-frequency guys and their bots that um, roam the net in all different exchange locations, um, beating the bids and offers and, and forcing um, them to their uh, their limit price. Of the, the big boys don't ever get a better fill these days. and. They estimate that costs them collectively about one percent of their return. Um, so I don't, I don't really know that, and I don't think any of us do. But I think the um, with the head, with the high frequency trading volume estimated to be about seventy percent of exchange volume, it's very difficult to tell what a fair price really is. We can only go by what we see. But I do know human nature repeats itself consistently, and that's why I've come to rely more and more on technical analysis because it captures visually the experience. Uh, I mean, the, it reflects visually the emotions of the people playing. Um, we have to look at the world, but we also need to remember we're dealing with people, even if they're big, big people. <laughs> Very good. Yes, yes, indeed. Mr. Tucker, thank you so much for those thoughts. Um, really uh, struck to the heart of the question I had. So uh, uh, thank you, and Larry, thank you for uh, having this conversation. I'll sign off now. You're most welcome. Okay, Byron, you have any closing comments that you'd like to mention? I, maybe one more story about the floor? You have to tell the story. You have to tell the story about Rocky, you know, in the middle of the pit when he, when he reached oh, his limit. Oh. Yeah, I think it's okay as long as you don't use any. Uh, well, this was in the belly pit. Um, this was a guy who had been there forever. And this was when bellies were really actively trading. And it was a crazy day. It had been a crop report, and God knows who was playing games. So the market went limit up, limit down, limit up, limit down, and settled unchanged. And Lenny took out all the money in his pocket and threw it up in the air, and he said, you've taken everything else. Take this as well. <laughs> and they fined him for that, for throwing money. <laughs> It was, yeah. um, it was, you know, what? remember, I guess, was it David Copperfield, the novel? This was, these were the best of times. These were the worst of times. But I remember Doug Chorna making what I think one of the best statements ever off the floor. He said, it's a hard way to make an easy living. Yeah, that's for sure. It's always been that way. It just takes a lot of time to learn the business. And fortunately, if you live long enough, you you learn the uh, errors of your ways. But uh, so many neophytes coming into it don't realize it is a, an experience that you have to learn to live with. Trading is a journey. It's, it's like uh, becoming an engineer. You have to have an education. You have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And you have to apply it. That's for sure. Well, listen, we want to thank you very much for joining us today. We'll have you on again, and hopefully you'll be finishing that book that we've talked about through the years very soon. If I don't, my wife's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks a lot, Byron. See you later. Thank you, bye folks, bye. for joining us. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.